Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. How are we doing? Good to see you. Uh, today is going to be a bit of an experiment. Um, something I've been meaning to uh, do for a while. Hopefully, it will be become quite a regular thing. Uh, but I'm going to go through a game live and provide some analysis, basically saying what I see. Um, I don't have any particular like angle that I'm approaching this from. Um, this is the beginning of the AEDL season. I haven't watched this game yet, so you'll see my uh, my reactions and my, my thoughts as I kind of go through it. Um, now we've got plenty of um, opportunities for interaction. You can chat live um, in the in the YouTube chat window. Uh, I'll be checking it and seeing your questions, uh, any comments you have, if you just want to like chat, um, then you know there's a space to do that. So this game um, footage is from Ulti World and AUDL. Um, I haven't I haven't chatted to them yet, um, but we'll we'll just this is an experiment. So we'll kind of we'll kind of see where it goes and what happens. Um, without further ado, welcome to everybody, and let's get straight into it. So, we'll start at the beginning of the game. Uh, let me know if there's any problems technically, like if you can't hear my voice over the game sound, or anything else is going wrong. Hello, Baden. Good to see you. All right, so. We've got the uh, rally flyers in white here. They come out with a horizontal stack. Um, open side handler immediately cuts across, and then opening up that underpass here, which he's uh, he's done a little fake and timed it and got under free. So that's that's could be a set play that they've got to initiate initiate movement. Now they've got the disc on the sideline. That looked like it was going to be a goal. I think that's Terence Terence Mitchell. Is it throwing that? And then yeah, it looks like it looks like he just kind of like catches it a bit awkwardly or goes for it a bit awkwardly. Um, and first turnover of the match. So they worked. All, they were trying to work all the way up that sideline. Now Dallas are coming out of a vertical stack. Early cut under to the sideline. Second one, quite classic offense. Not using the width of the field here. Here we go. That's a nice catch. I mean, obviously the uh, the option was a little. Uh, so the still count is seven in AUDL. So he he was getting a little bit uh, desperate at this point. And then this player is screamingly free. Um, but yeah, he's, where he's moving to is a little bit clustered because there's these players here. He kind of moves towards them, whereas the disc is actually thrown to that space over here, which which really was where he should have been going with that amount of separation, aiming over here. Trust, but you know, if you have to trust that the thrower can get the disc there, but if you can't trust professional players to do that, then who can you trust? <laughs> So yeah, save, save, save the turnover there. Really, that kind of should have been a turnover. So there's like a ten yardage penalty whenever there's an infraction by the defense. I think that might have been a foul on the mark. Like he should have gone with it with uh, with two hands. <laughs> Looks like he had time. Um, so he does these uh, steps here just to get that little bit of separation. But yeah, I mean he's got a big jump and a big reach, so I think he could have reached with both hands to that one. Maybe just rushed himself into it a bit. Oh, second camera angle.
quite a high stall. Alright, so three three turnovers already in this game. What's he throwing to here? Let's have a look. So it's this cut here. It's not a huge amount of separation there. You know, that has to be a nice throw. I think maybe just got a bit trigger happy because you know their offense their offense wasn't really flowing. You know, they had a couple of high stalls, took a while to get the disc moving. It's the middle of the field, that's quite nice, just laying it off. And then still gets high here. Yeah, so this fake, right? He sees this player coming under, steps out, and he doesn't throw it because maybe maybe I assume because this guy is getting in there. But if that if that guy's getting in there, then this guy should be able to get free. So it's a good move by the defense, but the offense should be able to punish it if they they keep focused on it, and then this guy's free in the end anyway. Instead, the thrower turns his back. When you turn your back to the field like that, then you're losing all connection with your players. So then he's not able to then cash in on on what he actually got from that fake and what the defense gave up until much later. Yeah, and really, this this defender probably had time to take that out as an option. So high still. They're moving the disc, but they, you know, they're, they're they're not generating anything with it. Not generating flow. And then when it goes over here, I think was this the guy that, yeah, this is the guy whose uh, defender came and poached, and he went to try and punish him by going deep, which is another thing that the thrower could have maybe been looking at if this guy poaches in, then look to hit the the poached player going deep. Uh, and then he comes under, gets the separation. Gets the disc. This guy times his cut, and I think he just likes the timing of the cut. But it feels like that's not a high percentage pass. You know, I mean, it has to be. He can throw that pass, sure. You know, I'm sure he can get a few more yards on it, maybe a bit lower. But it's it's a it'd have to be a very very good pass for it not to be a turnover. And where does that other defender come from? I'd like to see where this page has come from. So he's just come off this player over here. He was really, really far away from the disc for ages and not interested in it. Like, is that a cut? And then he's just kind of over here. So yeah, his defender's got plenty of liberty to uh, to go and make things difficult. And I was actually catching interception. Hey, Felix, Lucas from Austria here, or Australia. Uh, we just started playing Hex this season and are going to be putting it into practice at Div 2 Australian Nationals this weekend. Should be interesting. All right, Lucas. Good to good to hear that. Um, I know there's quite a lot of Hex is being played uh, in Australia. There's a few coaches that have been introducing it. I know in the under 24 or, uh, teams were playing it as well and some of the club teams too. Um, but that's really that's really good to hear. I, I wish you all the best. Uh, the best of luck at yeah Div Two Australian Nationals. Nice. I always like to hear that. Okay, so Dallas after the third turnover. I'm not gonna really I'm not gonna do like play by play commentary. I think I think that would uh, both distract me and also not be that interesting if I'm just like oh centers the disc. Pass it down the line and stuff, but you know, let me know, like what what you enjoy, what you want me to do, because this is an experiment. Gonna see what works. All right, so that was a bit stop start. Um, like this is this. This is a sketchy throw to make, like with that close coverage. Sure, surely there's could be better options generated, and then and an upline and a defender comes in poaching, and it's caught in the end zone. So pretty random, really, pretty random goal. Should have been a fourth turnover, 
this defender comes from here. Um, and this player here, you know, he's flat footed, he's looking disinterested. <laughs> he should be, when, his, when the guy poaches off, he should be waving his arms, um, making sure the defender knows that there's a poach, like as soon as he even does that. But instead he slows down and puts his hands on his knees. Um, yeah, I mean the the defender does the defender does well to be heads up to recognise that he's got a second and he's got an angle. Goes in the offense puts a great bid in in order to get a piece on the disc. But yeah, pretty random, really pretty random goal. Probably should have been a fourth turn. Um, Lucas, what's the uh, what what team are you um are you playing for in Australia? If you don't mind, uh, if you don't mind saying, of course. Yeah, so I think the offense might even get there first, but he has to get there so early that he's not able to make the catch. Okay, we can fast forward all the downtime, fortunately. Paul goes outside. Wollongon Crank. That's a great name. Wollongon Crank. All right, so like a side, side ish, side ish stack. You got a player over here poaching. You got three one to ones, four one to one marks so not much cohesion from the defense that guy goes deep the approach takes it so then this player should be marking the guy that was poached the guy that was poached starts to run towards the poach but then so does this guy <laughs> so then that guy goes in so then he takes him and then this guy should immediately be like right who, who am i on yeah because because you know got the same number of players as the other team so if he's marking this guy, then you've got to be on someone else. And there's this guy over here. So there's a moment of hesitation there. Which means that then this guy gets a disc in space. He then switches again, takes that mark. And this defender has realized, oh, I should mark that guy. I mean, so a few a few switches there um, with quite, quite a good result. Um, you know, it's quite random, like the... the is it random? It's it's hard to know whether this is a a, a pre-decided way of marking, or whether this guy just decided you probably should be poaching, and then they kind of made up the switches and stuff as they went along. I mean, you got to make up the switches as you go along, but yeah, I don't know whether they're all on the same page or not. But I guess we'll see as the game goes on. You prefer a more fluid stream? It's pretty demanding to watch right now. What a barge from 11 at the start of the play. Uh, so by a fluid stream, you mean you prefer me to just kind of let it run. There we go. Watch number 11. Yeah, he's, he tries to he tries to run through him, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, there's some fouling going on because there's contact happening. Technically. Oh, there's a guy stood there. <laughs> he can't run, but there is a person. Basic physics. Oof. Yeah, uncontested as well. Defenders like, yeah, sure. Um, that was a bit messy, though, wasn't it? Another turn. Look at the option that he takes. Um, he's thrown to this guy here. And he, I think he's just thrown to the timing. So boom, he, he sees that move. And then he's like, yep, yeah, I'm hitting that. But, you know, there's no separation. So that throw has to be perfect, and the, or the catch has to be really good. So what does that come down to then? Decision? Decision making error? 
yeah, I mean, this guy was going to be free under. This guy's free over here. There's plenty of um, there's plenty of ways to keep possession in that situation. Um, so yeah, a risky decision, I'd say. Uh, let me know what you mean by fluid stream, whether it's a technical thing of frame rate or if it's just kind of letting it play out a bit more. Ooh, just execution error, the go 3 just lifted his sidearm a little bit. This is better. Yeah. I guess I guess people call this small ball, but there's no play needed. You know, well the play that's needed isn't a big throw or a big catch. It's it's um speed as you release. So how's this score generated? Um that cut comes slashing across, um, which means that the force chooses to go and take it. I think that's open side, judging by the way these guys are marking. That defender comes over to the open side. Maybe it, maybe he was expecting a switch. This guy's not having any of it. So then the break. Now I like the way that he follows his throw. Basically, he's free from his defender over here. So, so he should be thinking about this whole area here to exploit. Okay. Because he can easily get the disc anywhere around here without his defender getting to him. So he throws, he runs after it. Defender's not particularly keen on closing him up, and he can't use this space here because this guy's there already. I'd prefer the guy catching this pass not to take his eye off this guy. Like, What's your aim here? Do you really like? Is he aim to throw it into the end zone right now, or, or is he aim to keep the disc moving, take the open pass, not throw anything risky? Because if you don't want to throw anything risky, this is this is the open pass right here. Yeah, but he catches it, and at this point, if he's still looking at him, he can just pass it back to him, and they're in a great position to score. Looks downfield. Maybe he's taken a second to see whether he can pop it in. But he, but he knows this guy's free because he turns around really, really quickly. I think it's force of habit. I think people catch a disc and look to the end zone, force of habit. And he's like, oh wait, yeah, I should just throw to this guy. And he gets it. And then that break is an option. The timing's just slightly off with that player from the back. It doesn't matter though because the force comes over and then the defenders had to commit to that break side cut. So then he's able to throw it middle front and again turning away. So at this point of the catch, this guy's free. So he can stay to, he can stay facing him and give the disc back to him. And then he has the disc moving onto the break side again for anyone else to time a cut off. But instead turn and look at the end zone. And then turn and look back at this guy. Who does get free in the end anyway. I think, yeah, it's force of habit. Before he even catches it, he's he's changing his angle to turn and look at the end zone. The open pass is already there. So not a technical thing, more about having a deep look at every little bit of play. Yeah, okay. Okay, I mean, I've got a lot to... Uh, I see, a, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I see that I want to chat about, but um, point taken. Okay, Dallas coming out of a bit of a side stack. Execution error on the flick, a round flick. Um, I personally think side stacks force force throwers to to throw um just slightly longer than comfortable passes. 
to receive is sort of moving slightly faster than is like comfortable as well. Just kind of lowers the percentages. Ooh, that should have been a turn as well. Bit of another one of those high flicks. Maybe there's some wind. I'm looking for some flags or trees or something. Can't see if there's wind, but it did look like it was a bit gusty. Alright, and then we cut out all the downtime. Apparently you're doing some kind of zone. And they've, you know, switched to man already. Okay, where did that defender come from? So the reason for the turnover is that this guy is right there, basically. At this point, yeah, if you look at these, this guy here, at that point, it's great, great. This is going to be a complete pass. He turns, as soon as he turns, that's, that pass is no longer on. And where does he come from? <laughs> okay, so his player throws the disc and then runs over there. Okay, now that that move there is not a threat. I mean, at least not, not from, not from teams that don't always look to throw the kind of deep cross field hammers to the back corner of the end zone. Um, so it's clearly like a clearing out move. So this defender is just immediately like, okay, he points at him. I don't know who he's communicating that with, but he's pointing at him. Which is better than nothing, just to be like, yep, there's someone here. And then he just goes into this like hot area where he knows that there's gonna be some action. Um this guy is free over here, so if the thrower saw it early he'd be able to put an around out over here, but we've seen a few of those sidearms pop up and turn over. So he pulls out of this cut. A little bit prematurely, but then you know, if you get the disc really far back here, you're disconnected from all your players who are, who are bundling up in the end zone, so it also leads to a problem there. Defender has overcommitted there, but then he's got help from this guy, and there we go, there comes the turn. What was that? Some kind of a foul or violation. I won't go back and look at it. I think that was a... Uh, the force was too tight. Another 10 yards. Violation on the force again. <laughs> Just walking out the field. And then quickly thrown to the end zone. There was there was a period in American Ultimate where the forces were just fouling constantly all the time. So I'm glad that that is being punished in a way. Uh, look at this cut here. He just he just pushes off him. He just pushes off him, but you know where does where does the contact begin? There, that's the foul there. The defender raises his arm, puts it against the offense. So technically, the defender initiates contact. And then he just continues the contact. So it's technically not a foul. But, you know, it's weird. Weird stuff going on. That None of that should be happening. IMO. If you guys have any thoughts, then... Uh, yeah, use the use the chat. You think that was a foul? You think the ref should have called it? Impossible for the ref to see? You think the defender should have played on the other side? Like, more on the open side, you know?
It's another, it's another sketchy flick. Nice catch. And then a quick hug. Aye. He releases it quite quickly. Quick fake on the flick. And he's throwing to this, I think. Yeah. So it keeps the keeps the inside out. Obviously he had a free pass here. Inside out. That's quite good though. I mean it's good separation. The shape's good. It's just a touch too high. Depended uh, the offense should have it though, because he's got plenty of time. Defender puts a bid in. Now when defender's bidding like this, he's he's either going to touch or he's not. So the offense doesn't need to bid high. Obviously it all happens very quickly. Defender doesn't touch it. Offense touches the underside of the disc. And it's a turn. But yeah, if that defender touches it, then he's got it. If the defender doesn't touch it, then the offense can just catch it down low. So in the end, offense didn't need to bid high. That's a nice throw. A little bit of separation. But a uh, good throw to make full use of it. And then an easy throw into the end zone. Mm -hmm. All right, let's make sure we... I want to get through the whole game. And I know if I talk about everything I want to talk about, then we won't be here a long time. So I'll skip through things. So Bradley, Bradley with the with the zone again. Dallas no longer playing the side stack, but Riley seems to be always be leaving a player like fairly deep. That's nice. Oof. Okay. Okay, what did I like? I liked um, this player's throw here. Just because he throws and runs with it, like, he's not actually free. But he is, he's basically being marked by two people. I don't know, it didn't generate anything in itself, but uh, it's the kind of move I like. Uh, it's a nice layout to finish. Okay, skip a -roo. So both times Rally have played the zone, um, an overhead has busted it open from Dallas. My cat's enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. She's really the big selling point for these videos. <laughs> oh, it's the same play. You see, he just runs through it. This is why I don't... Like, one of the things I don't like about set plays is that when the defense aren't marking you, like, you, it, like it depends completely on what the defense are doing or whether the set player is actually worth it or not. In this situation, just passing the frisbee, he's completely free. Why, 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 does he, why does he have to run here and then someone else run under who's got a person marking him and then his momentum's going away from the end zone? Yeah, you can give it to the free person with their momentum going towards the center of the field. Doesn't make any sense. I could talk I could talk a lot about defense. Like when you have players like this all bunched up together, it does not make sense to to mark one to one. And there's a little bit of separation. This is quite a nice throw. Just the space. Yeah, punishing the uh, just punishing the one-to-one -one defense. Really, if if the offense just make nice throws, then they're gonna score. All right, let's see whether Randy plays his own again, which has been busted open by the overheads the last couple of points. If you're just tuning in, uh, this is like an experiment of uh, going through a game, uh, watching it while live streaming, saying what I see, doing a bit of analysis. 
Oh, it's, it's, the, it's the thing I was saying about earlier about um, after catching, just looking downfield. Catch. Here's the free pass. Here it is. <laughs> this guy can see. This guy can see all the field. He can see everything that you're about to look at. And then no, turn and look. And then mm, mm. okay, now he's marked out. Now you have to initiate flow again. Yeah, flow stopped. It's much harder to initiate flow than to continue continue flow. So that would be nice. Imagine if he did that pass. Imagine if he did it. Then probably the disc would go across the middle to this guy. It'd be super sweet. But instead, it's like maybe we can just take another 20 yards. Maybe we can just grab 10, 20 yards. No, you can't. It's, it's like 50-50 when you, when you choose to look away from an open pass looking somewhere else. That's a nice lefty. Um, it's unfortunate. It doesn't quite stick in the hands. Yeah, his momentum's going past it. But flow had stopped, right? That earlier pass would have been much easier to catch. Ooh, zip. Yeah, accurate throw. Just an accurate throw. The, the separation wasn't huge there. Yeah, it had to be a really good throw, and it was. You're doing something on defense here. That's a 50-50. Yeah, big big play needed. Big play needed for that score. Big throw, big catch. Uh, couldn't quite work out what Rally are doing on defense. It's definitely not one to one. Um and they've got a few players kind of dotted around in between people. And then one guy covering two deep, so you can see there's someone else deep, not the ref. There's another guy, there he is. But yeah. Oh, that defender gets up higher earlier. But the offense has the last laugh. Um, yeah, big play, big throw needed, big catch. Uh, not like a strategic win for Dallas there. So, I mean, Rally could really take that as a win for their defense to an extent. You know, obviously, if Dallas consistently do that, then that's not exactly a, not exactly um, a solid thing. Uh, God, you sound so much like my captain and coach. Obviously, watches your videos, hence the hex. Play the way you face. Throw the open pass. Yeah. It's in their hex movement decision tree. The first thing you look at after you catch the disc is, is anyone open in front of you? Yeah, the way that you're facing. And if they are, you pass them the frisbee. Okay, where do, is this? Does this guy literally just run to the end zone from here? Yeah, it's just it's a play. So. Against one-to-one -one defense, a good throw and a good catch, or a good throw or a good catch, within reason, will uh will be a score. No help from any teammates. I mean, it's hard to really like. They could they could be sandwiching here. This could be a switch. You know, with these two with these two players setting up with this, you could have one go guard in the under space, one go guard in the deep space potentially. Doesn't have much separation, but it's enough. If it's an open side pass that you can just take your time over and uh, yeah, put it nicely where, where it needs to be for the for the score, easy score. Um, Baden says building a flow style of game takes time and drilling to get players out of the upfield look only pass mindset. Yes, yes, that's why that's why I don't I don't hold anything against these players. I don't. 
Like, like I'm criticizing, yeah, but um, it's not um, it's not their fault, <laughs> you know. Like um, the way that everybody's been trained to play is not on a flow style. It's it's a yardage style, so it makes I completely understand why all the players are they're looking in the directions they're looking, why they don't take those open passes sometimes. And you're totally right that it does take time to um, work those bad habits out of players. Um, I've been very fortunate to be coaching uh, university level and club level for many years. And the best is when you have players come from other sports into Ultimate um, and start playing Hex because they don't pick up the bad habits of looking downfield. They just keep the disc moving. And uh, yeah, they become... They become really good GB level players within like two years. Let's have a little look at this pass. So, Rally are doing some kind of zone, aren't they? They're yeah, they're they're, they're always leaving two people deep. Uh, I mean, they're always leaving one person covering two people deep. Next point. Ooh, that's unfortunate. So it's this this is almost a stall out, right? This player here is free. The entire time this player is free. That there's a there's a weird focus on yards again. You know what? He's he's running towards where all the defenders are, so he could just chill. He's in good hex shape. <laughs> Throw not looking at him. The hex movement decision tree says chill. Um, obviously they're not playing hex, but uh, yeah, pushes up field. Throw has to go between two defenders. It's a turnover. There's been a lot of turnovers. It's a good separation. Yeah. That's all right separation. Especially for a hammer which kind of curves a lot. It's just a safe safe throw, easy catch. What's he doing? What what's he doing? Why is he doing all that stuff? What does he does he think that that was a great play? <laughs> like the thrower, thrower did some good stuff there. He just jogged to the corner of the end zone and caught it. Uh, I don't think he should be uh, spiking the disc for no reason or uh, trashing up a billboard advertising a cancer charity just because you want to amp your team up a little bit but uh you know it's an exciting time first game of the season can understand why emotions are high oh this is a uh, buzzer beater isn't it all right i won't, I won't analyze the buzzer beater too much <laughs> i think there was a whistle just before the disc was thrown though let's see the ref cut oh, i thought the ref was going to try and huck it the length of the field then probably good I imagine I imagine these refs are mostly ultimate players or X players. Okay, double team to stop the throw. Probably a hammer, right? A blade. Easier to catch a blade. Uh, it sticks in his hand. Oh. <laughs> Try to yank it off each other. Uh, I wonder who caught that first. If we get a nice replay, I might see who who caught that first. There's there's two Dallas players in there. Black Glove is the rally player.
He grabs it way after, doesn't he? Oh no, no, he does have a hand on it here. Oh no, 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 isn't he grabbing it there? I don't, oof. Oh no, that's, oh, who knows? Yeah, no, that's the rally player that groups it late. They probably caught it around the same time. Anyway, not that interesting. Do, 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 do. Here we go, forward. End of the first quarter. How are you guys enjoying it so far? Is there anything you'd like me to do more of or do less of? And what are your thoughts about the game? And where are you from as well? It'd be interesting to know where you guys are watching from. I know we've got Australia, South Africa in there. Okay, rally with the zone again. Because it's quite tough to play a zone on the bigger field of ADL. Oh. That was a tough throw because it was leading. It led the defender towards. Uh, it led the catcher towards the defender. So it's pretty awkward. But it hit him in the hand. Ooh. That's close. Alright. A few easy yards. Oof. It's a nice little throw. There we go. That was nice. I like that offense. Oh yeah, you see here the receiver has to go towards the defender that's coming across. It's gonna be off putting. the camera would zoom out a little bit <clears throat> just so we could see all the downfield action see what's going on there Ooh. Oof. okay it's looking a bit smoother like it's, I think it's because the, the disc carried on, like carried on moving. Yeah, that like that that pass there could make all the difference. The fact that he doesn't turn, pivot, and look down over here, and that he's just like, uh, I'll throw to this person that knows free, even though they're on the sideline. Then he catches it, and he's already facing downfield. So then he's able to then use his momentum as he throws continue that momentum all the way into the end zone well near the end zone yeah nice play a little lefty backhand for the score what was that was the other team offside or something or weren't ready in time maybe so they get to take a short pull and they blade it in. Uh, okay, so split stack, two over here, three over here. Uh, if I were these two defenders, I wouldn't be marking like that. I'd be marking one in front and behind. Uh, that was a sketchy throw because the separation was what one one meter. If that, I mean, I think he's thrown to the speed and the height, and this guy just charges past, just like I'm, I'm going to the end zone. Doesn't matter. And he's like, "Well, I'm going to throw it out in front of him." Yeah, the percentages are in your favor, um, but not by very much, you know. Like this, this is a fifty-fifty. 
not technically a 50 50, probably like 70 30. But it gets you most of the way to the end zone. So scoring then becomes more likely. A little bit stop start. This could be flow now. Yeah, there's some flow. Yeah, still keeping the flow up. That's nice. And then continue over there. Should be something. No, flow stopped again. Could be flow again. Yeah, that's a nice little move. Yeah, they switched. Yeah, that's cool. I think the, the scoring options came after two or three flow passes. Which is ironic because flow stops when people look to score. A lot of what you're saying, Lucas says, a lot of what you're saying is kind of explaining why my captain tells us not to turn around and look upfield too much. Hmm. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad you're getting a uh, a deeper understanding of the why. Like a lot of the content that I put on Phoenix Ultimate is is just the end result from years and years and years of watching, playing, and coaching Ultimate. Um, there's a lot. There's hours that I could talk about the why. Um, so I'm glad that that's kind of coming out. Oh my god! Oof. I thought that was going to be a collision or something. <laughs> Who's this throw to? I think it's an inside out over here, right? It's supposed to be more inside out than that. Yeah. It w it wasn't wasn't a bad option if it was inside out. Worked out anyway. Okay, next point. Vertical stack from Rally. Did they do a split stack last point? Yeah, they did and just ran to the end zone. The same guy. Is he going to throw it deep again? Sorry, interrupting it. This guy is just like, well, I'm free under, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, if I go, well, to be fair, that is the right time to cut deep when your defender's coming under like that. See you later. Up to the end zone. Okay, didn't have the throw. I wish the camera would zoom out. Can't really tell anything. You can only see three players. So that, that stack has moved slightly to the side. Oof. Take the open pass, take the open pass. No, oh, he's marked out now. Okay, less advantageous position. Everyone else should come back and get connected. See, this is the um, one of the problems with um, yard-focused offenses is that when you have this reset option, yeah, who's like one isolated player getting the disc backwards, when they get it, then they're disconnected from everyone apart from the person that threw it to them, which means that the next pass is often very difficult or, or much harder than it should be. So this is why people focus a lot on making those continuation cuts and timing those continuation passes because that's where a lot of turnovers can happen. But I would rewind and be like, well, why are we throwing a, a reset backwards one-to-one -to, -one to, uh, to an unconnected player? Some nice flow. So he's completely free somehow. Nice downfield, times that move. Once a disc is moving, it's much easier to keep it moving than it is to initiate initiate that flow from static. Mm, there's ten likes those moves. He's very good at them. He's, he's able to set up his defender somehow so that he's... The guy just powers through, doesn't he? That's good. He does it He does it earlier on as well to generate a lot of the movement. Yeah, yeah, here he's just doing it. It's given like an inch. 
Is he trying to foul him there? No, 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 no foul. He just powers past and because of the loose mark, he's able to hit that throw. Yeah, give it to him back. That's quite nice. He, he didn't he didn't delay to look at the reset then, he just scanned the field. And then he just does it again, just powers through, gets a nice little lefty backhand into the end zone. I think lefty backhands are uh, still still underrated. I think beginners should learn lefty backhands before they learn uh, 20 yard flicks. You know, you want to you want to be able to throw it everything in the 10 yards in front of you with both hands, like both backhands. I mean, before then you learn that about how to throw further. Um, but this is with the hex system where you have a setup whereby like if you can throw it in those 10 yards then, then you're always going to be able to keep the disc alive um, providing your team um, give you those options this is that reset again the one-to-one -one reset you're back here you're disconnected now from all the players he's timing that move here and this pass is quite often the turn Not always. Oof, 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 oof. Mm. Punished. Is that high stall? I think it was a high stall. So what did he have? Why didn't he have clear options? Everyone's downfield, not interested. There's a huge amount of separation, like disconnection here. He's the only player that's nearby. That defender just takes a step at the right time. That's enough. This guy's like, why are you not throwing to me? Maybe he doesn't want to break the force. Maybe the force has already done a good job. The old hammer to the end zone. Ooh. Yeah, so not much separation. You see, when they come into the screen here, it's like two or three meters separation for a 70 yard pass. But I can understand why they take these options because there aren't many other options being provided by um, the setup um, relatively, you know, because of all the disconnection things. Fifty-fifty. Oh, yeah, that's a big goal. Easy goal. Easy final throw, anyway. <clears throat> um. So yeah, rally playing like a zone type thing because they've got one, two, three, four, five, six players on the screen, and Dallas have got five. You can see deep. There's this Dallas player drifting deep because that deep defender has been was busy marking this guy. However, the throw was was too deep and, and floaty. So really, the, again, the rally defense pretty much worked. Yeah, um, Dallas. I think they they chose to work the disc over to the break side because they had a free pass over here, but they chose to take on the mark, break it. We should open up other opportunities, but there's nobody connected to this player. He's got three defenders near him. Does the still count? The still count doesn't start. Like the still count wouldn't be on two now, would it? It starts when the player gets within three yards. Is that right? Can no one confirm that? And he takes that shot because he sees the separation here. Maybe. Obviously, the throw floats a bit more than he wants to. I like this throw. 
Like, unfortunately, like if he's able to catch that there, then he'd get the disc back immediately. It'd be really nice. I mean, does he? He milks it. I think. I think he could catch it there. So yeah, he could catch it there and pass back to this guy. Now, if he did that. This guy would probably be getting the disc around that 30 yard mark, right? So he'd catch it, he'd lay it off around now, he'd be catching it here, and his momentum would probably take him up to here. So he, the other guy, this this guy here would have the disc there, completely balanced and ready to throw. But instead, we get an extra five yards at the expense of losing balance, which means which means more time is taken, but fortunately, nobody's picked up the guy on the far side. Yeah, so it's interesting just playing through the alternative options. If the disc here was caught, thrown back to this guy, probably they would have been able to swing it over to him nice and quickly with, with a couple of passes. But you can never know for sure. The next point, yeah. Oh, looks like I skipped through quite a lot. Okay, here we go. Here's the pull. My block. Oh. I like Rally's spacing. That was a sketchy throw there. Yeah, it looked like he, it looked like he could have thrown something that was um, <laughs> easier to catch. Let's say. Hmm, didn't take the open pass. Didn't like it. He takes it. This is the guy that generated the score down over this side. It's a bit crowded, but yeah, there we go. They're active. He's providing nice, nice, quick options. Do you really want the disc right on the end zone line? I suppose it's easier to score from there, right? Yeah. Less yards? I don't know. Sometimes when I'm on the end zone line, I feel a bit crowded. It's a bit cramped. It's nicer just to be like a little bit outside. In fact, the area that you're going to turn, you're least likely to turn over from is your own brick mark. The likelihood of a turnover increases the closer you get to the end zone. Someone did a heat map thing about it once. But the likelihood of the score increases as well. I guess. One pass there. How do, how do they make it look so easy? It's one to one, and they're being backed by several yards. So he gets a disc with no force on. He's got enough space and time to wind up. And we have no idea where that guy came from. So we can't really speculate. The separation isn't huge. So that's still quite a nice throw needed. But obviously they're pro players, they got nice throws. He could have been a lot further and he would have been able to lay out for it. But I mean, if you're able to throw pinpoint to people that are two meters free of their man every time, then you should be scoring every offense. It's just uh, sometimes those ones don't work. Everybody. 
Alright, kind of weird defense from Dallas here. We've done a couple of switches, but it doesn't seem to be that organized. They should switch. They, they didn't switch. You see that I knew that guy was deep. Right? I knew he's got a defender deep, so there definitely should be a switch happening. And he thinks there's going to be a switch. And that guy could mark him. And he could take this guy here. But, but no, and they're not punished. Well, maybe they are a little bit, actually. Oh, it's that guy. <laughs> Just powers through to the end zone. I, I will get better at um, people's names, by the way, uh, if I keep doing this. Um, I, I I hope I I hope I um, you know, can do this like uh, one game a week, let's say, one AEDL game a week, perhaps, but maybe other games, um, and I'll get to know all the players in their current form as well. I'll come in, you know, with with some knowledge uh, and expectations and whatever, but. Uh, it's good to see just um, get to know players in their current current season. But this guy's funny because he just powers through. He doesn't care where their defenders are. He's just like, I'm going to go over here. And that throw, you know, that throw could have been a lot better than it was. Like, he could go anywhere towards the corner. But in fact, that disc is actually going to land so far away from the corner. Anywhere here would have been quite high percentage. Classic offense, Go, going up the sideline and then looking to reset and go across. Oh, taking the slightly risky shot because it's kind of what the defense, it's kind of what the defense is giving you. I mean, they're giving you this more, you know, like this defender is closer to the distance than he is to his man. So this whole space, any disc over here will be caught. Or even even just like through to this guy, but that's not necessarily an easy one. No, that would be deed. Yeah, the the offense should catch that. Really gets a little bit underneath it. I think there's wind. I think there's a bit of wind. But yeah, a bit of a risky shot. More turnovers. Uh, is that a timeout? Feels like a timeout. Uh, why did Dallas get the disc? Oh, coach called a timeout just before the throw. That could be one of those pro coach things of like, uh oh, my player's about to turn over. Timeout. That's something that's unique to the ADL. Uh, well, it's in other sports. I think American football. That should be a nice throw. I mean, it's it's the right option. Yeah, it's the right option in terms of who you're throwing to, where you're aiming it, and the type of throw. So it should be nice. But that wobble means that it's going to turn left a bit more. The receiver gets underneath it a little. Goes for the really high left-handed catch. Doesn't get it. Damn it. That should be so nice. When he, he should have the return as well. That defender should have caught that. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Is that another timeout? Uh, let's have a look. Alright, kind of side ish stack. From Rally. Mm -hmm. Defender was able to do a lot more than just like one job because the offense were bunched up. So yeah, like this guy doing good stuff. There's no point in 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 guarding your player if he has to run past all of these players, especially when you got two teammates here. 
yes, yeah, there's no point in guarding him, stopping him going that way. As soon as he goes, you're like, yeah, look, he's gone. Go on, team. And then he's like, okay, now I'm, now I'm in perfect position again. Uh, who's marking that guy? <laughs> Uh, this this guy? Oh yeah, because he switches. Yeah, these. I mean, these these switches. Just uh, it's like a half switch. It's so disorganized. You know, it's it's the right idea. You do have to switch and sandwich and stuff against offense that clump clumps up in the middle. We saw earlier they just score easily when you allow them a couple of meters separation. But the switches are so disorganized and, and the communication is lacking. No one's talking about this guy being unmarked. And then he's in good position here. And then he's like, oh, wait, the force. And then he's, he runs up to put the force on. He's not looking over his shoulder. He's not looking looking at what, what the next option is to cut out. And this guy here... So that's good. Okay, so his player goes goes deep. And I think he knows he doesn't have to chase after it because there's quite a lot of other people gone deep. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's one defender that's further deep. So when this guy comes under, he's going to run past him. It makes sense to switch and mark him. Now, ideally, you want your teammate to then mark the guy that you left. This guy's head down and going towards the disc. These two are being marked by these two. Hopefully, they're sandwiching. And then he comes in and is able to get it anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 good defense because they're they're doing something different and they're not marking one to one. They're actually, you know, responding to what the offense are doing, responding to where their teammates are. Um, and it's first game of the season, so it makes sense that it's not, you know, a, a, a finely tuned machine yet. Um, but it's good enough to get some turnovers. What do you think, Lucas asks, what do you think of the AEDL setup with its different rules, and time games and such? Um, it's quite a broad question. I, I like the um, reduced stall count, for sure. Um, some people say that it doesn't actually make much difference because uh, when people count, they count fast anyway, and so you only get 7 or 8 seconds. But... Uh, Oh yeah, I like I like a seven second stall count. I think that's good. Um, with the quarters and stuff, I mean I don't I I don't really know um, as a, a player, and I'll find out as a spectator, I guess, um, how the quarters fit. I guess it makes it quite kind of interesting strategically because I'm used to playing indoors where you have like a hard hard cap on the on the time and uh, you have to adjust your strategy you know you have to change the risk percentages that you're happy taking uh, depending on the time that's left in the game and I guess that that kind of starts to apply when you have quarters because um, they've got 42 seconds here till the end of the point so you know they, they, they have to decide what they're gonna do with it whether they're gonna hold on to the disc and put it in the end zone on those on those 42 if they want to get themselves into a particular position to make that easier um, and I, then I could talk about referees and everything um, but that could take a long time I think I might save that for a uh, for a future one yeah this is sketchy I don't like this guy cutting out here because the thrower is never looking at him so the whole time he's running he's bringing his defender in and really, that is, that's almost like a nasty injury, <laughs> depending on what the players do. But now he's got a force on him. <laughs> if, if that defender wasn't there, then he would have totally toasted his man and be in a much better position. But yeah, that's another thing. You might want to put an early score in um, so that you have more time in the remainder of the game. Um, yeah, so that, that kind of time time strategy stuff kind of comes into it. Let's just have a quick look at the decision on that hammer. Yeah, it's a good decision because um, it depends on that position for some reason. 
He just poaches under, just because he's he's just poaching because he sees some action. But most importantly, he's got his back of his head turned. So I always throw when I see the back of a defender's head. That means they've got no time to react. Yeah, I I think there's better solutions than, than um I think there's better solutions than referees. Um I just don't know if there's any viable ones at the moment. Um Yeah. It's it's an interesting topic. I'd be interested to hear you guys' thoughts as well. I mean we got fifteen people watching. Maybe some of you are from uh, USA, maybe some of you play in the AUDL. Uh, maybe a lot of you from Europe. Maybe some of you have never played with observers. Oh, greatest. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I thought this point felt very free, free, uh, free flowing. It's because there's a uh, ten seconds left. <laughs> Oh, he does well to get that. He does well to get that disc back in the field. What are the rules? What are the rules are different in the ADL? Double team. Yeah, I think double team is fine. I think keep double team in the game. You know, like it's an extra rule by default. It should be allowed. You know, by default. People can, two people can mark the disc, you know, just if you if you don't add an extra rule that prohibits it. So then why are you prohibiting it? Because when there's two people marking the disc, somebody else on the field is free. Yeah, and then there's, there's six people who aren't with the disc in their hands. One of them is unmarked. Or rather, there's six people on offense and five on defense, if there's two around the disc. So it balances out, you know, offense should be able to use that to their advantage. Um, I don't like rules which are in there being like, oh, that's a bit overpowered. Let's put a rule in to, to nullify that. I think the game is great, yeah. So the less rules you have to try and fix it, the better. And I think double team is one of those rules. You know, maybe it's because people didn't have such good throws. Maybe because people fouling on the mark more but you can't you can't write rules on the assumption that people are going to be breaking some of the other rules so i think double team um i think double team should be allowed in normal normal play and picks but that's that's a whole another discussion i don't think picks should be a rule Right, just throwing, just throwing a 50-50 there. There's already been two turnovers in this point. It's, yeah, the, the general percentages are quite low. Like you can watch games, where, like the final of Worlds, Japan USA, nine turnovers in the whole game. And there shouldn't be that much disparity between between oof, nice catch between those teams and these teams. You know, yeah, like the final of the World Championships is going to be a high level, but it's not like they were just bringing down more of the fifty fifties. It's the decision making, yeah. Like that that was a low percentage decision. Yeah, yeah, you got no mark on you. Your reaction when you got no mark on you should be to pass the disc to someone that's free and then get the disc back yeah a quick one two here and you've got the you feel you've got all these yards and you've got the disc moving and you've got other players you can bounce it off but no mark throw it deep what's that two meter separation it's just low percentage you know um but you're playing in a game where where the other team's turning over a lot as well so 
you don't get punished for the low percentage. You know, you get the false positive if a player makes a high catch. You know, celebrated highlight reel. But in reality, like that, sh that throw should never have gone. Like the end zone's huge. <laughs> Damn, it's getting crazy. The end zone is huge. It should be easy to score without resorting to a big play. Damn, that's a good D. And that's also a good follow up. Should catch it. <laughs> I think you might try to. Ah, oh, foul. Thoughts on really wide pitches. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's fine. Uh, oh man, dropped it. Really wide pitches. Really wide pitches should make it overpowered for offense. But it doesn't. Um, so it's fine. It's good. Like, I. I <laughs> Mm, it might encourage us to think more about space and how to use space. What is going on in this game? <laughs> like it feels like it feels like it's super like close to the end or something, and the teams are just getting crazy and throwing long loads. Or well, this is some kind of weird bonus point, you know? Like this point is mad. Like, okay, that, that was a good option because he had two people pretty deep, but the, the flick was just a little bit low. So double team. Now this guy catches it here, right? Now it should this should be a huge advantage for the offense. Yeah, but but he wait, all these players are uninterested and disconnected. Like, maybe they're running their set play. They're all looking for the next cutter. If they were connected, yeah, then without a mark on, he'd be able to, to throw the disc to somebody who was in this space. But instead, the... the uh, the defense don't really get punished. What is going on? Is that a timeout? Yeah, it must be a timeout. Um, yeah, really wide pitches. Like, I like playing offense. Um, and offense feels nice on wide pitches. If if offense was good enough that the wide pitches meant it was just easy to score uh, and that then you know games became more random because it wasn't strategy that was bringing the turnovers it was just you know bad luck or whatever in particular the, the odd throw or catch you know then the game might get a bit boring you know, if it was so easy for the offense, but it's clearly not easy for the offense. I think it should. I think it should be a lot easier for the offense. But you know, the way that people are playing at the moment, the systems people are running, the way people are viewing offense, means that there's still loads of turnovers. Um, so wide pitches doesn't doesn't break the game. Uh, I like playing ultimate on on weirdly sized pitches. You know, like sometimes I'll get my team. To train where like um where like this is the end zone line yeah and the end zone is this area here and then this is an end zone line and the end zone is this area here and and the field is like two thirds of the length of um like the width of the field is two thirds the length of a normal field you know so it's like a ridiculously wide field with um shallow end zones that are obviously really wide um and that's really good training just for you know, being able to swing the disc around, um, initiate flow moving laterally rather than looking for yards the whole time, get the defense thinking about how they can position themselves differently to stop the stop the space. So we've got Rally um, bunching up again on the offense. Dallas are not doing their poachy D, which worked really well for them, even though it was chaotic. And so it's relatively easy. It should be relatively easy for Rally to just beat them one on one into into spaces they need. This is what I was saying earlier about the reset. Yeah. Now I like this positioning. If you know hex, then you know that this is a standard position in hex. And it's good that he gets the disc there. That's fine. That's that's good frisbee happening. But where's everybody else? <laughs> you know, like this is the field. And and everybody's here, 
Yeah, just because you just because this is where you score. Keeping the disc alive is is really important as well as scoring. So people should be in this space here, but because they're not, stall gets higher. Person has to run really far. Person has to be moving really fast to get the disc there. Defender's right on his back. Ooh, interesting. Like he 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 was overbalanced or not overbalanced? He was just unbalanced. Like he looked in the right area after the obligatory staring downfield for a second or two, but then this step, this step here, kind of set, set his balance wrong, and then he set it back and. Yeah, just balance issues. Yeah, just throw, just throw. <laughs> what's, what's going on? Why would you throw that? What? Yeah, okay. It's exciting. You got you got no mark on this guy's a little bit free. But really, okay. If it's a good throw, then it's a score. But if you don't think it's going to be a good throw, you gift them the disc. <laughs> but then if you're playing against a team that gifts you the disc, sure, give them, gift them the disc, it doesn't matter, you'll get it back. I'm not saying that these teams are, are, are bad at, at Ultimate, I'm, I'm saying that uh, the systems could be a lot safer. But you know, but I don't blame them. That's again a fifty-fifty-ish. Well, that was that was more like a seventy-five twenty-five, wasn't it? Like this, this cut comes from here, I think. Goes through everybody, and then he's got two defenders on him, and he's got like three three meter separation. He's also really tall, and he can jump really high. Goal. Weird point. Weird point. This, 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 it's been a few weird points. This was it third quarter. And we've got a comment. T Johnston says in the ADL, don't like the way that a team with a lead can run down the clock rather than having to score the last point to finish the game. Just my thoughts. Okay. Uh, I find it quite interesting. You know, for me that's like a different strategy is needed possession so being able to hold on to the disc not let the other team get it and if you can do that for a certain amount of time and you've scored enough points already then you get the win i don't think that's uh you know it's not it's not random it's just like it's another skill right maintaining possession is a skill it's a oof, strategic kind of skill um, and similarly for defense that was an amazing throw for defense disrupting possession is a skill rather than you know defense you can you disrupt possession and you prevent scores a lot of the time teams just have to prevent scores because the offense is always trying to score but if the offense are just trying to maintain possession then you have to learn to disrupt possession get this throw Perfect. Right to the right space. Um, I like Dallas's spacing here. Yeah, for the for the whole point, I know, I don't think they're using it in the best way. But they they've got a fair few options connected around here. I don't know what the other players are doing. Um, stretching the defenders, I guess. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Undefendable. That that bladey flick. I thought he had just released it really wrong, but is he throwing to this guy down here? Yeah, because this guy's trying to switch off. Yeah, he's like switch, and this guy's like, yeah, okay, I got it. And then he's going over here. It's it's, it's a good defensive play because who expects that throw? You gotta, you gotta take gambles on defense. That was a good one to take. Uh, but he pulled the, he pulled, it, pulled the throw out. But it was not expected. So good, good work. Johnny Miller says, it happens to basically every other team sport. What running down the clock? Yeah. 
yeah, and in you know video games as well. I can think of some. Get a lead, you hold on to it. It's, it's basic game game stuff. Um, but you know, um, some people don't like the uh, the change of pace that that brings. What has caused the change of pace in this game? I swear the last three points have just been madness, right? I know that actually some ADL teams think about deliberately doing things to 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 entertain the crowd because they're a business and and, and the crowd are the the paying customers, so they have to please them. Nice throw. Maybe this is one of the ones I shouldn't shouldn't break down. Good bid on the D. No force on him. Puts a throw out. Three or four meter separation. Very nice flat throw out in front in the space. Um, basketball's got a shot clock, and I feel like in ultimate people play as if there's a shot clock. A shot clock, you know, they'll pass the disc around for a, a while. And always someone gets it, and it's like, right, now's the time to throw it in the end zone. I was like, well, I mean, you didn't have to. There's an argument that, you know, every pass has a risk of a turnover. So therefore, keep them down to the minimum. But there's plenty of counter-arguments to that as well, being like, well, if you play with that mindset, then your passes will have a lower percentage. Because you're going to be focusing on the scoring passes rather than maintaining possession. If actually teams designed their systems around maintaining possession, then each pass would be less chance of a turnover. Nice, another another lefty scuba. So what are the defense doing here? Hmm. Yeah. So I think I think this guy here saw that movement and was like, "Oh, I should probably take that." Yeah. Yeah, I think they should have sandwiched. Yeah, these two offenses are quite close together. He should just go to the back a little bit, and this guy go to the front a little bit. And then they, they don't get ripped apart like that, because he does end up taking this guy. That's the harder throw. It leaves the harder throw open. Again, defense has to take a gamble. It's not a bad one. But I think with a bit of teamwork, it didn't have to be such a big gamble. Yeah, there's this weird um, shot clock phenomenon in Ultimate. You do see some teams maintain offense for a long time. Like Japan did it at Worlds. There's 12 minutes that Australia didn't touch the disc in a game. 12 minutes. It wasn't all just you know them being on offense. There was like a timeout and stuff. But still, that's ridiculous. Um, I think if you drew this out on paper, then then you, you wouldn't want your defenders to be stood in between the offense like that. You know, it's like right, we've got three offense that stood in a dot like this. How do you logically mark with three defenders if you have this much space around them? I don't think that's the answer. Could change the question and be like, right, you got one player who has these attributes, one player who has these attributes, one player has these attributes, and then you got these three defenders with these individual attributes yeah that's like that makes more sense if you're marking up one to one to get those matchups but if you're looking at it just on paper strategically theoretically then uh, you surround that stack nice hammer oh wee what do you think? Do we do you think they've changed their mind and, and they've they decided to entertain the crowd? I think Rally were in the lead by quite a lot earlier as well. It's the first it's the first game together for a few of the flyers. 
So they should iron out some of the teamwork stuff, Johnny says. Yeah, you're right, Johnny. Yeah. This, this is important to remember. This is the first game. But, you know, I hope I hope that the systems encourage teamwork on defense. Because some systems don't. <laughs> Lots of hammers. Oh, the defender got really close to that. Maybe could have gone like a second earlier, a second harder. A second harder, just a little bit harder. But you know, difficult when uh, you don't know where that player is because you don't want to be diving head first into unknown territory. Rani with the zone. Encouraging those hammers. That mana check. Just an execution error. Through to the ref, I think. I mean that, that was good. That was good enough separation to throw to. I think uh, defense should have switched here. Yeah, this guy should not. This guy should definitely mark that guy because this guy, this defender can definitely mark him. He can definitely mark him. He should one hundred percent switch. Just let the offense be free both ways. But it doesn't work out. Okay, if you're just tuning in, um, this is an experiment of, of me um, watching a Frisbee game live and talking about what I see, doing kind of basically some analysis uh, as I go through the game, and hopefully I'll be doing this more, um, going through games live, giving you guys a space to chill out, watch the game, uh, think about the you know what's involved strategically see my perspective on it oh nice d um you can you can chat to me you can ask questions you can chat to each other like let's just you know chill and enjoy watching the game that's good man like he sees i'm not sure which one of these he's marking and then he sees a heart this is the uh, only option he's got closes it up gets the layout very nice I don't even see what happened then. The double team. Did, did they both jump when he picks the hammer? Yes. Ah, oh, nice. It just opens it up. Double team mark, and he still manages to break it. It's a really little pass. Right, cool. That was the goal, wasn't it? Hi Henry. Glad you're here. Where are you from? We've got players watching from Australia, uh, South Africa. What was that was that offside or Did I some kind of repool? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, it's it's delayed. It's a bit delayed, but it, it's okay. It doesn't. 
reflect it, you can see the ref, and let's watch this right from the off. So rolls out here, and the ref is like, quick, 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 puts on the floor. Let's see, he looks at this guy here. <laughs> Crab catch. <sighs> okay. Is that is that to bring it level or is that 15, 14? Fifteen fifteen brings it level. What is going on? This is the second repull in a row. It's, I don't know, man. Something's happened in this game. Henry Rassi, I'm Rassi, I'm I'm Batman from Germany. Well, hello Germany, and uh, and hello Batman. <laughs> First stack. This is the classic American style way, conventional style, I guess, of fielding the pool. One throw, get as many yards as possible, get the disc central, and then run your play. Yeah, these three, well, these two players are free, uh, and this guy over here is free as well. There's no, there's no interest in flow, and I don't, you know, it's understandable. People, people don't see the value in flow. It's all about the yards. Um, so the offense is all very focused on yards, which means the defense knows what you're focusing on and should be able to use it to their advantage. Okay, split cut from the back. Throw here. Wait, it's not massively free, but throw, throw is just too high in here. Uh, the D does well to attack it. Fifth in all. Close game. Uh, I'd be surprised if Rowley don't take it there. Oh no, they're rushing it because the classic, because the clock's running out. Oh, he caught it short of the end zone. Okay, so that's the end of the third quarter. Oh, stats since 2016. Roughnecks have been winning more and done one in the playoffs. Rally not done well in the playoffs. Head to head, Rally have only won two out of six encounters. Okay, well, Rally were like six two up, and then and then just madness started happening in this game, like multiple turnovers per point. Oh, the disc has come back in with two seconds left on the clock because there was a timeout called. Oh, because they wanted to switch the thrower. So as soon as they picked it up, the coach called timeout. Gets a nice throw out. <laughs> okay, let's go through this in slow motion. It's just there we go. Oh no! What? How did he not catch that? He's the only hand there. It just bounces out. It's going to be a rebound. You got that with a layout. Oh, <laughs> oh. funny stuff. <laughs> Fortnite. You play Fortnite, Henry? You play Ultimate Frisbee? Or just Fortnite? Or both? I play both. Okay, so that's the end of the third quarter. 15-15. Uh, I don't know who wins this game. Getting good spacing from Dallas. Although, I mean, the players are near the disc anyway. Um, however, there's an overload of rally defenders near the disc. So it'd be really nice if the other players got more involved. Uh, here they are, they come back now. Okay, rally. Rally have switched to one to one marking. Ooh, K 
Okay, that is exactly what the defence was giving you. So, it's a nice throw. I was a bit worried because he was on his backhand pivot the whole time. It looked like he was a bit unbalanced. But he set himself well for the throw. Mm, it's 50-50. Mm, I don't know how we call that. The guy gets there first, doesn't he? Looks like the offense is there first. Um, when he releases it, let's have a look. What does he see? Is he really throwing to this guy here? He's putting out to the space. Yeah. Okay. Throw your throw your receiver open. <laughs> Fairly low percentage, uh, but a nice catch. Any thoughts on how uh, you just play Fortnite? Do you play professionally, Henry? Ultimate is your hobby. Um, Sinisimens says, any thoughts on how offense-defense should approach those jump ball end-of-time situations? Uh, I guess it makes sense to double-team. Uh, if Especially if they've got a, a, a reset and have like a loose double-team, because even if the reset gets the disc, you can have two players running over to, to stop any like flat huck. And then you just got you just got to beat everyone else in the end zone. <laughs> um, this is defense, by the way. You got to get all the other defenders guard in the end zone when there's two seconds left. Um, how should offense approach? If it's a jump ball situation, that I mean that's kind of already pre-designated how the offense are approaching it. Um, if you got very minimal time, then yeah, you just got to put it up in the end zone. It's 50-50 ish. Oh no, that was the right option, but just pushed the throw a bit far. I mean, I liked. There was a point where they had like 15 seconds left, and Rally seemed to just be playing like very like openly. You know, like every player was happy to throw it to the end zone on a, on on like you know a 70-30 look. But they also realised they had enough time to actually make a few passes, and it just. It just seemed to open up the field. Like that that point looked different to me. Um so I think if you've got yeah, if you've got like a few seconds left, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, then you know, you get that get that disc moving and keep the disc moving and make aggressive moves to either get it on the break side or get it get a short pass or get a deep pass. Space your players out. It's easier, much easier to score when you're near near to the end zone if the defense know that the uh, that the disc has to go in the end zone fairly soon. I know that from indoors. Yeah, the static jump ball can be a bit tricky. All right, Florian, you got to leave the office. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. And uh, Henry, you're from Belgium. Oh, cool. We got a viewer from Belgium. What's going on with this game? Okay, what's the defense doing? Is he is he poaching off the front? Not really. <laughs> he thought about it. He was like, "Oh, no!" Nah. This guy, this guy is just marking here, just in a weird place. This guy's marking this guy, and these two are both behind these two. This it could be better teamwork, I think. It's just like. It doesn't look like anyone's on the same page as anyone else here. Like these two are on the same page, but but like of different books, or you know, like <laughs> they're both doing, they're both marking them in the same way, but that doesn't work well together. Uh, and then everyone else is marking everyone in different ways. If it's a, if it's some kind of organized system, then I I can't um I can't work that out at the moment. Okay, he goes deep, he points. Brilliant, he takes him. But what about the other guy? Now, now who are you marking? This guy just lets this guy run past him. Like, that that movement, that movement from the offense is is bad movement because it's inefficient. Like, they're, they're crossing over. Um, so it's just theoretically bad movement. And it's only punished if the defender switches. Which he does so late. So late. 
that you should you should train and say that this is the trigger yeah you get, learn to recognize that movement and then switch um again i don't blame i don't blame players because it's just the way that we play ultimate and the way that we train ultimate the way that we learn you know cover your man and then any switching stuff is like this super advanced all you need frisbee high high, high frisbee iq for it um i think i think differences can be made with how you train beginners and how you train players to to react to offense but also if you change how you play offense then you would oh dear if you change how you play offense then you would um change how you view defense as well you'll be able to see you know what you consider as errors in offense if you play the offense in a different way um so yeah it goes it goes it goes deep i guess uh Baden says, cheers, Felix. It's cool to be part of the experiment. Thank you, Baden. Thanks for being here and chatting. Much appreciated. Uh, we have eight and a half minutes left of this game. It's been a timeout on the field. Um, Dallas are actually up 16-15. What was that? Oh, yeah, changes. Um, Dallas are up 16-15, which is surprising because Rally were up at the beginning. However, Dallas have won six out of the seven um sorry Dallas have run six out of eight matchups with rally since 2016. okay so what they've got here spattering of players at the back one iso at the front it could be a lefty scuba again it's very difficult to defend those you just it's just tossed it because you can almost see but the defender's half looking so the defender's going to be able to react to that Oh, the force! Look at that! That's a push pass, isn't it? Okay, let's play it, sorry. Oh, he catches it! Oh, strip! No? Okay. <laughs> Madness. I don't see a lefty scoop at uh, point blood very much. Okay, Rally have stepped up their D. Very high stall situation. In fact, there might be a stall out. Yeah, referee's blowing the whistle. Okay, still 16-15 Dallas. Blam. Okay, it's a high stall, I think. Otherwise it's not it's not a good option really with those two defenders either side. Disconnection in the middle. Foul on the mark. I really don't want to be doing that. Those, those 10 yards and the still resetting is just not something you want to give up. Now they're getting their flow going. Looks downfield, looks back in. Close dodge. Little pass to the side. Oh, and he's bladed it over. I thought he was going to throw to the far side. But he threw near side. That guy was double marked. Yeah, like he chooses to throw it here and he's got clearly got two defenders on him. If he had bladed it over to this space, or even faked it and then to get that defender committing and then throwing a hammer over to this side. Much higher percentage. Defender does well. Like he's fast. Um, but that was definitely thrown into double coverage. I'm always expecting them to just throw it as soon as anyone goes deep. Yep, there we go. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many defenders are there. They just fancy the percentage. It's going to be a foul. Like, the decision, the decision to make that throw. Like, you're winning by a point with six, six seven minutes left. You know, the, the, the separation he's got is only down the sideline. So the disc is always going to bend across to the middle. It's likely to bend across to the middle a little bit. 
But hey, that's their disc on the end zone line. So, got a sweet false positive. Yeah, just just turns the turns the defender around a bit. Gets him committing to the break side. Okay, running. What do I think about coaches being able to call timeouts and swap whole lines? Um, uh, I, I I kind of like it because it's different. Um, I haven't. I haven't thought through all the all the angles of uh, you know substitutions and well this is nice yeah, that's good yeah I haven't thought I haven't thought about about that question much it's an interesting one but I, th I think it's good I think it adds another strategic element because then timeout has more value to it. Um, I like the fact that players can move during stoppages as well. Normally you can move through timeouts. But I like the fact you can move through stoppages, you know, like it's just it's just a nice little change. Um and it, it takes out the whole um everyone must be exactly where they were when the violation happened. And instead you can just set up however you think is best, you know, and and yeah, it should advantage the offense, but in reality at the moment I think it advantages the defense if the offense will set up. Which is a weird. Which is, I realise that's a weird opinion, but I'm expecting the offense to like group together and the defense to then be able to surround. Um, being able to switch whole lines and stuff is kind of interesting because you still only have what um, a couple of timeouts, a half or something. So it's not like you can do it all the time. It just changes the. Uh, it just adds adds something in strategically, which uh, yeah, I quite like. Yeah, maybe in time if I get used to it, I'll realise that maybe it's not the best. But at the moment, it's interesting and cool. Uh, the A wall marks here. Neither team seems to be really setting up their deep looks, just hucking it down the sideline to the first cut they see. Yeah, they seem to they seem to throw to the timing. It's like, oh yeah, this timing is good. I can get it past my force. I'm going to throw it. Um, the setting up. Yeah, this. The, the the depth of the setting up seems to be just uh, the cut is being timed well. Um, the throwers don't seem to be getting the disc moving forwards. See, that's much nicer. Like he gets the disc, he gets the disc moving forwards. Okay, and then instead of putting a big backhand fake in, or just throwing it to this guy. He just sees that open pass and just pops into the middle. And now, now we're in a really good situation. Um, besides the centering pass option you mentioned earlier, are there any other American conventions that you find puzzling or inefficient? Uh, inefficient, like pretty much, pretty much every convention <laughs> um, on defense, not surrounding stacks, you know. Um, just kind of not using that that basic teamwork. I say basic. Um, on offense, having to like starting on the side of the field, so then you have to run really far to get to get to like the active space or whatever. Like it's basically turning into a bit of a foot race. Very inefficient, I think. Um, just allowing the, allowing the disc, being happy for the for the stool to reach three. You know, when the stool reaches three, the flow is stopped. The defense can get, you know, like a stranglehold on your uh, your offense. Um, so a team shouldn't be happy with when the stool reaches three. Or well, as soon as it reaches three, it should be like, uh oh, we basically failed to maintain flow. Let's quickly let's look to initiate it again. But like, offense starts with stopping the flow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is what you mentioned in your question. Catch it, throw here, flow stops. And then this guy is disconnected. Like the the reset, the reset is inefficient. Inefficient maybe not 
inefficient in, in, in a slightly kind of next level like yeah one to one throwing the disc one to one to someone isn't the most inefficient but then when all your other players then have to have to like work harder to make those yards back up yeah inefficiency comes into it puzzling i wouldn't <laughs> like pu puzzling i don't find a huge amount of stuff in frisbee puzzling um just because i've been playing for so long i can kind of understand like why things are done um i do find some things funny though like if someone catches a huck just outside the end zone um and then they look at the end zone and start faking at the end zone but all their players are behind them it's kind of puzzling i guess why don't they just turn around and look at their players <laughs> what are they expecting to gain just looking into the end zone faking uh, but it happens a lot seems like a lot of i back my receiver of your defender so it doesn't matter where i put it or how free they are yeah um and if you watch uh, usa japan the final of worlds 2016 you see a lot of usa scores are just that they're, they're backing their receiver over the defender and and the american receivers are good to be backed you know so it's relatively high percentage um however in terms of like theoretical strategy without the variables of physical size and just what players are used to doing then on paper that that should not be the the winning strategy when you include the variables then obviously it is the winning strategy because they won um however if you have a team with players who are all uh, equally matched with their opponents and they have you know loads of time to train new systems or whatever then then taking those riskier deep shots uh, i think will will, uh, will not happen as much But yeah, like a lot of things in Ultimate, it's just kind of expected. Like the like the shot clock phenomenon. And the thing is, like as I mentioned this earlier, that if you take those risky deep shots, it matters less if the other team are doing the same thing. You know? The actual the value of possession goes down because the other team aren't valuing it. Um, I don't know whether it should be that way. I don't, I don't think it should be that way. But uh, this, that's what happens. <laughs> it's not so bad to turn over because... Whoa! That guy is flying! Because there's a good chance you get the disc back. Check him out, man. He takes off. Look how early he jumps. Oh, damn. That would be an amazing photo. Great bid. See that, that 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 I'm surprised he didn't take that shot. You know, he gets it here. This guy's this guy's free. Where's your lefty hammer, or even just a blade over to this corner? And then this guy's free as well. Like considering the considering the number of deep throws they threw to like two meter separation, where they had to throw eighty yards, just switching yards and meters, just carefree. Uh, it's surprising that they don't take these ones. Which suggests to me it's like an emotional thing, <laughs> you know, like it feels like you should huck it or it feels like you shouldn't huck it rather than actually on paper what they're seeing, what's going on. Damn, this could go two points up here. They do. 19-17, just two minutes left. Oh, Rally. Rally had it. It was 6 up, weren't they, Rally? Did Dallas just kind of make this game go crazy? Something else I've noticed a lot is um, teams will copy the other team. Uh, and I notice it a lot because, you know, I teach um, Hex. And then when the teams we're playing against play very different style, suddenly uh, the Hex teams start copying the style. Yeah, so if a team starts playing crazy Hux and not valuing possession, 
Oh, they had to catch that to... Like, that was a good decision, right? Because they have to get a D and turn in the next minute and a half. Uh, anyway, so it's good to take that risk because that's their chance of winning the game. Um, I'm into this game now. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> if Dallas turn here, then then uh, Rally will have their last chance. Oh, they're booing the crowd. Crowd are getting into it, encouraging the the more risky play. But yeah, so if a team if a team doesn't value possession and starts throwing loads of crazy hucks and and uh, like how overheads. Yeah, especially overheads. Then uh, te the other team copies it, you know? They change their style completely and they just start copying what the other team are doing. And vice versa, you know? Teams that play against Japan, when Japan keep possession, keep the disc moving around, will then start playing in a Japanese style more, you know? They'll value possession more, they'll keep it moving. You like you play up to that level or, or you play down to that level, depending on which way you look at it you just start copying the other team even even players on the same team like if if i start throwing hammers then my teammates will start throwing more hammers um it's like monkey see monkey do is basic animal instinct and so maybe what happened in this game is that dallas just started started going a bit mad getting being like right we need to score loads of points and then rally were like oh yeah Let's, let's try and score loads of points as well <laughs> without really thinking about it. It definitely went mad for a while. Okay, they're running down the clock. That's game. Yeah, tricky one. Rally would have had to just tighten up one to one, I think. When when the clock's running down like that, Dallas is totally right not to throw it in the end zone. Rally should be marking out every option so that they have to have to take a bigger risk. So that was actually. Nice offense from Dallas at the end when it should have been harder than it was in the rest of the game. It didn't seem like it was. Maybe because their, their, their focus changed from being scoring to being possession. They realized possession was the way to win it at the end because um, of the clock. But it is interesting. Maybe if they had that focus, then possession would be easier to maintain throughout the, the rest of the game. Any predictions for nationals this weekend? Well, you know, I'm uh, I'm invested in that, so <laughs> I can't give an uh, unbiased opinion. Uh, Sussex all the way, of course. Um, maybe they decide to keep possession since they're up with one or two minutes left. Yeah, up one with two minutes left. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, that was quite good fun to do uh thank you all for uh, tuning in and you know those that chatting as well it's good to chat to you all um i hope you enjoyed watching the game with my perspective added into it um thanks to ulti world and adl um and yeah i hope to do this more often i'll uh Yeah, I'll see what games what games are coming out. I might do one AUDL game a week. Um, and I might, you know, turn like after doing this video then I could I could make like a you know, ten minute um YouTube uh video with like highlights of the analysis or, or, or like deeper analysis now that I've kind of watched the game. Uh we'll see. Um but this in itself was good fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks very much for watching. And I will see you again soon. Bye bye. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes, you're good. Yes. Oh yeah.